So what are the new entities that have been added? So it is very imperative that you read this for this current year exam and for subsequent examination because this is a 100% sure short question that is going to be asked in your exam. The new entities that have been added okay, in the WHO 5th edition of the soft tissue tumor, this is very imperative that you know about them in details. Okay, So the first group of tumor under the heading of lipomatous tumor, we are having two entities. Atypical spindle cell or pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. They are composed of variable proportion of atypical spindle cells, adipocytes, univacuulated or multivacuulated lipoblast, pleomorphic to multinucleated cells, and myxoid to collagenous stroma. They lack MDM2 or CDP4 amplification. RB gene expression is lost generally. They have a lower rate of local recurrence around 10 to 15 percent, and there is no known risk of D differentiation. Secondly, we are having the myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma. It occurs predominantly in children and young adults with a predilection for the mediastinum. Admixture of areas resembling myxoid liposarcoma with more cellular areas containing overt nuclear pleomorphism which resembles pleomorphic liposarcoma. They lack the recurrent chromosomal changes namely the MDM2 amplification and DDIT3 gene fusion. The clinical behavior is akin or very similar to pleomorphic liposarcoma. If you look at the diagram over here on the left hand side over here, we have the atypical spindle cell lipomatous tumor. The tumor composed of mildly atypical hyperchromatic spindle cells and adipocytic cells set in a myxocollagenous stroma. On the right hand side, we are having atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. There is a presence of, of multivacuulated lipoblast okay, is be seen over here and that can be accepted also. This is the atypical but you can see that much amount of pleomorphism is present over here. That is why it is the atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. Then we have the myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma. So neoplastic cells, they are set. Basically, if you see the neoplastic cells, okay, they are set in a myxoid stroma. They have a plexiform vascular pattern. So you can see the vessels, okay, the plexiform vascular patterns. Rare pleomorphic lipoblast might be encountered in this particular tumor. Okay. Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with an important lecture. Today we are going to discuss about the WHO 5th edition soft tissue updates. Okay, So let us see what are the objectives for today's topic of discussion. So today we are first going to start with the basic introduction of the soft tissue tumors. Then we are going to see the grading of the soft tissue tumors. Okay, That is the same FNLCC system of grading. Then we are going to discuss about the 5th edition latest updated classification of soft tissue tumors and we are going to discuss the new entities that has been added in the WHO 5th edition soft tissue tumors. So this is a very important potential question for this year's exam so stay tuned till the end of the video. Okay. So basics of the soft tissue if you see. So, uh, if you look at the epidemiology, so the benign mesenchymal tumors, they outnumber the sarcomas by a factor of at least 100. So, the benign soft tissue tumors are much more common as compared to the malignant soft tissue tumors like the sarcoma. Okay, coming to the age and anatomical uh, site distribution, at least 30% of the benign tumors of soft tissues, they are lipomas, 30% are fibrohistiocytic tumors and fibrous tumors. 10% are vascular tumors and 5% are nerve sheath tumors. So, you now know the basic distribution okay, of the soft tissue tumors. Okay? There is a relationship between the type of the tumor, the symptom, the location uh, with the patient age and the sex. For example, lipomas if you see, they are quite painless. They are rarely seen in the hand, lower foot and leg and very uncommon in children. Angiolipomas if you see, they are often painful and most common in young men. Angioleomyomas are often painful and common in lower leg of middle-aged women. The half of the vascular tumors occur in patients who are less than 20 years. Of the benign tumors, 99% are superficial and 95% are less than 5 cm in diameter. So, of all the benign tumors that you come across, 99% will be superficial and 95% are less than 5 cm in diameter. Soft tissue sarcomas, they may occur anywhere, but 75% of them are located in the extremities, most commonly in the thigh and 10% each in the trunk wall and the retroperitoneum. There is a slight male predominance. Of the extremity and trunk wall tumors, 30% are superficial with a mean diameter of 5 cm and 60% are deep seated with a mean diameter of 9 cm. Retroperitoneal tumors are often much larger before they become symptomatic. 
About 10% of patients with sarcoma, they have detectable metastasis most commonly in the lungs at diagnosis of the primary. Overall, at least one third of the patients with soft tissue, uh, soft tissue sarcoma, they die from tumor related disease, most of them from lung metastasis. Around 65% of the soft tissue sarcomas are histologically classified as UPS, that is undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, previously known as MFH, that is malignant fibrous histiocytoma, okay, liposarcomas, leomyosarcoma, myxofibrosarcoma, synovial sarcoma, or MPNST, that is malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor and around three-fourths of such tumors they are highly malignant. Now age related incidences vary. Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma occurs almost exclusively for example in children and synovial sarcoma occurs in young adults whereas UPS, liposarcoma, leomyosarcoma, myxofibrosarcoma they predominate in the elderly. Like almost all other malignancies soft tissue sarcomas becomes more common with increasing age the median age at diagnosis being 65 years. So why is it so much important for you people to understand the age and the anatomical distribution of the soft tissue tumors? Because you are going to get an idea okay, about the tumor just by looking at the site of the tumor, the size of the tumor. okay, And also not only that, you can also get an idea from the age of the patient. okay. So very importantly, this has to be kept in mind because in your exams, whenever you are getting some case, for diagnosis okay and if you are suspecting a soft tissue tumor look at the age for example if it is a young child okay for example you are getting a polypoid lesion in the bladder okay in a seven year female for example then it is pointing towards rhabdomyosarcoma even without looking at the slide understand what we are trying to say so it is very important that is why i have included them over here and this is the latest epidemiological data that is available from the fifth edition coming to the etiology of soft tissue tumor the etiology of most benign and malignant soft tissue tumors, they are unknown. In rare cases, less than 10% cases, genetic and environmental factors, irradiation, viral infections and immunodeficiency have been found to be associated with the development of usually malignant soft tissue tumors. Now, there are also isolated reports of sarcomas which are arising in scar tissue at fracture sites and close to surgical implants. Some angiosarcomas arise in a setting of chronic lymphedema. For example, a patient who has undergone, uh, you know, certain surgery for breast car car carcinoma and axillary lymph node dissection was done. So, in that case, that patient will be having chronically lymphedema will be there and as a result, over a long period of time, they can develop angiosarcomas. However, remember, the large majority of soft tissue sarcomas, they seem to arise de novo, that is by itself, without an apparent causative factor. Some malignant mesenchymal neoplasms, they occur in the setting of familial cancer syndrome that we will also discuss, okay. But four major etiological agents have been implicated in literature. What are those? Chemical carcinogen, radiation, viral infection and immunodeficiency and the fourth and last is genetic susceptibility. First, we will see the chemical carcinogen. So, several studies have reported an increased incidence of soft tissue sarcomas after exposure to phenoxy herbicides chlorophenols and their contaminants, dioxins in agricultural or forestry work. So, very important. If you look at the radiation, about 5% of soft tissue sarcomas are radiation associated. The risk increases with the dose. Most patients have received more than 50 gray and the median time between the exposure and the tumor diagnosis is about 10 years. More than half of these tumors have been classified as UPS, most often being highly malignant. In skin, angiosarcoma is by far most common, radiation-induced sarcoma. Now, patients with a germline mutation in, re in retinoblastoma gene, that is the RB1 gene, have a significantly elevated risk of developing radiation-associated osteosarcoma, very, very important point. Usually osteosarcoma, okay. Similarly, patients with germline mutation of TP53 or leaf romani syndrome have a Significantly higher risk of developing radiation associated osteosarcoma as do patients with NF1 that is neurofibromatosis type 1. So, radiation induced osteosarcoma is very common. Okay. okay. Now, viral infection and immunodeficiency HHV8 plays an important role in the development of Kaposi sarcoma and the clinical course of the disease is dependent on the immune status of the patient. EBV infection is associated with smooth muscle tumors in patients with immunodeficiency. Okay. Lastly, we are having genetic susceptibility. So, several types of, uh, of benign soft tissue tumors have been reported to occur on a familial or inherited basis. However, these reports are rare 
and comprise an insignificant number of tumors. The most common example is probably hereditary multiple lipoma or angiolipoma. Desmoid tumors occur in patients with Gardner syndrome subtype of familial adenomatous polyposis. Okay. NF1 and NF2, neurofibromatosis type and 1 and 2 are associated with multiple benign nerve sheet tumor that we already know. Okay. In as many as 5 to 10 percent patients with NF1, MPNST that is malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor will develop usually in a benign nerve sheet tumor. Moreover, 5 to 7 percent of these patients may develop one or more gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Gist. Lee Fromani syndrome is a rare autosomal dominant disease which is caused by germline mutation in the TP53 tumor suppressor gene, which predisposes the individuals to the development of sarcoma. By the age of 30 years, half of the patients with Lee Fromani syndrome have already developed malignant tumors, of which more than 30% are sarcomas of soft tissues or the bone. The inherited or bilateral form of retinoblastoma with a germline mutation of RB1 gene may be associated with the development of sarcoma as we have already seen osteosarcoma okay so it is very common okay so these are some of the you know syndromes which are associated with the development of soft tissue sarcomas or soft tissue tumors okay now coming to the clinical features clinical features are only occasionally sufficient to distinguish benign from malignant tumors of soft tissue most of soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities and trunk wall present as large painless incidentally notated mass that the patient sometimes associate with an episode of injury. Conversely, some patients present with rapidly growing tumors that are occasionally painful. Most patients with intra-abdominal or retroperitoneal sarcomas present with an asymptomatic abdominal mass that is confirmed on abdominal imaging. On occasion, non-specific abdominal pain is present. Less common symptoms include gastrointestinal bleeding, Incomplete obstruction, neurological or systemic symptoms, example fever, fatigue and anemia and occasionally also alterations of LFT or liver function test is there. The seemingly innocent presentation and the rarity of sarcomas often lead to their initial misinterpretation as a benign condition. All soft tissue lesions measuring more than 5 cm and all deep seated lesions are statistically likely to be sarcoma. Patients with such lesions should therefore be uh, referred to specialized centers for diagnostic biopsy. Now the terminology that is basically used in the fifth edition to reflect the biological potential. So these were adopted in 2012 only and they are continued yet. Okay, so they are divided into four categories. Benign tumor, intermediate but locally aggressive, intermediate rarely metastasizing and malignant tumors. So most benign soft tissue tumors do not recur locally. Those that do recur do so in a non-destructive fashion and are almost always readily cured by complete local excision. Exceedingly rarely a morphologically benign lesion may give rise to a distant metastasis. This is entirely unpredictable on the basis of conventional histological examination and to date has been best documented in cutaneous benign fibrous histiocytoma. Now intermediate locally aggressive tumor if you see soft tissue tumors in this category often recur locally and may be associated with an infiltrative and locally destructive growth pattern. Lesions in this category vary rarely if ever metastasize but typically require wide excision with a margin of normal tissue in order to ensure local control. The prototypical lesion in this category is desmoid fibromatosis. Now, intermediate rarely metastasizing soft tissue tumors in this category are often locally aggressive but in addition they show the well documented ability to give rise to what is called as distant metastasis in occasional cases. The risk of such metastasis appears to be less than 2% and is not reliably predictable on the basis of histomorphology. Metastasis in such lesions is usually to the lymph node or the lung. The prototypical examples of tumors in this category include plexiform fibrohistocytic tumor and angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma. Among the malignant soft tissue tumors, in addition to the potential for locally destructive uh, growth and recurrence, malignant soft tissue tumors known as the soft tissue sarcomas, they have a substantial risk of distant metastasis ranging in most instances from 20% to almost 100% depending on the histological type and grade. Some but not all histologically low grade sarcomas have a metastatic risk of only 2 to 10% but such lesions may advance in grade in a local recurrence and thereby require a higher risk of distance spread. Example, mixo fibrosarcoma and leomyosarcoma. 
it is important to note that in this classification scheme the intermediate categories do not correspond to histologically determined intermediate uh, grade in a soft tissue sarcoma okay now we are going to see the grading of the soft tissue tumors so in accordance with the latest fifth edition of the who the, there are two system one is the fnlcc system and one is the nec system so who is recommending that the fnlcc grading system is far more superior okay for grading and therefore this grading system is yet adopted and yet in current practice so it is very very important because in your exam this will be one of your question so the criteria which are used to grade sarcomas included degree of cellularity pleomorphism mitotic activity necrosis these features have been found to be of diagnostic uh, and prognostic value for both adult and pediatric soft tissue tumor. However, there are some limitations to the FNLCC grading. What are those? There is a subjective nature of evaluation. For example, if I am one pathologist is evaluating, maybe the grade will differ with other pathologist who is, you know, who is evaluating. There, uh, there is a limited sampling in biopsy material. So, therefore, grading becomes very difficult because of the limited sampling in biopsy material. Confounding effect of preoperative therapy. Now, despite these limitations, grading remains one of the most powerful and inexpensive ways of assessing the prognosis in soft tissue sarcoma. The system devised by French Federation of Cancer Center Sarcoma Group, also known as FNCLCC grading system, it is a three-grade system that is most widely used to grade sarcomas and it is based on the evaluation of three separate parameters, tumor differentiation, mitotic rate and extent of tumor necrosis. Now, remember you should know the full form of this in English, that is the French Federation of Cancer Center Sarcoma, is very important exam question. Okay, so this is the FNLCC grading system. So before I go into the the grading system, just look at the full form. Okay, that is there, uh, not in English. I think this is French. That is Federation Nationale des Centres de Lutte contre le Cancer. Okay, so this is actually the true uh, full form of FNLC uh, FNCLCC grading system. Okay. So the tumor differentiation, let us see the first parameter. The score 1 is for sarcomas that closely resemble normal adult mesenchymal tissue. The score 2 is for sarcomas for which histological typing is certain. Score 3 is for embryonal and undifferentiated sarcomas, synovial sarcoma and sarcomas of uncertain differentiation. Okay? So depending on the type of tumor morphology and differentiation, we are giving score 1, 2 and 3. Then the mitotic count, score. Uh, 1 is for 0 to 9 mitosis per 10 high power field, score 2 is 10 to 19 mitosis per 10 high power field, score 3 is more than equal to 20 mitosis per 10 high power field. Okay. Now, basically the 10 high power, uh, the 10 high power field rule is now being changed. Okay. Now, instead of using the, you know, 10 high power field, they are giving to calculate in meter square in area. Okay. Details about that you can find in the latest edition of WHO. Okay. This is mainly for the practical purpose. Okay. Then we have the tumor necrosis, score 0, no necrosis, score 1, less than 50% tumor necrosis, score 2, more than equal to 50 tumor percent necrosis, okay. So, depending on whatever is the parameter, okay, you have to give a grade. So, grade 1 is a low grade tumor when that score is 2 to 3. Grade 2 is an intermediate grade tumor when the total score is 4 to 5, okay. Grade 3 is a high grade when the total score is 6, 7, 8. So, how do you take out the total score? So, whatever you get in tumor differentiation, you add with the mitotic count, you add with the tumor necrosis, okay. So, you add all the three scores and then you get a total score. Okay. Now, we are going to see the WHO 5th edition soft tissue tumor classification. If you see, again the soft tissue tumors have been classified according to the tissue from which they are arising. So, for example, we are having adipocytic tumor. So, you have lipoma, lipomatosis, lipopatosis, li lipomatosis of nerve, lipoblastoma and lipoblastomatosis, angiolipoma, myolipoma of soft tissue chondroid lipoma, spindle cell lipoma and pleomorphic lipoma, hibernoma, atypical spindle cell or pleomorphic lipomatous tumor, atypical lipomatous tumor or well-differentiated liposarcoma, de-differentiated liposarcoma, myxoid liposarcoma, pleomorphic liposarcoma, myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma, okay. So, these are some of the new entities that have been added, the atypical spindle cell pleomorphic and the myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma, they are new entities, okay. Now, you must have seen that I am just, uh, you know, click, uh, you know, uh, cl I have just, uh, you know, put a certain uh, um, uh, correction mark over here. So, see, it is not possible, okay, Re in, in real, it is not possible to mug up each and every diagnosis. So, there are certain important diagnoses that you should always remember. 
and what is very important that when you are asked about the classification you have to very importantly remember the headings okay so these are the important ones under the adipocytic tumor then comes the vascular tumor so again the first important group is that that is very important the hemangioma so there are different types like synovial hemangioma intramuscular hemangioma arteriovenous malformation or hemangioma venous hemangioma then we have a new entity that is the anastomosing hemangioma then you have epithelioid hemangioma lymphangioma tufted angioma and kaposi form hemangioendothelioma retiform hemangioendothelioma then you have papillary intralymphatic angioendothelioma then you have kaposi sarcoma composite hemangioendothelioma okay pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma epithelioid hemangioendothelioma angiosarcoma okay so these are some of the very important terms that you should remember under the heading of vascular tumors then we have pericytic or perivascular tumors like the glomus tumor myopericytoma including myofibroma angioleomyoma okay and the next very large group of tumor is fibroblastic and myofibroblastic tumor which includes nodular fasciitis uh, proliferative fasciitis and proliferative myositis myositis ossificans ischemic fasciitis elastofibroma fibrous hematoma of infancy fibromatosis coli juvenile hyaline fibromatosis inclusion body fibromatosis fibroma of tendon sheath desmoplastic fibroblastoma myofibroblastoma okay calcifying aponeurotic fibroma ewsr once mat3 positive fibroblastic tumor a new emerging entity is there angiomyofibroblastoma cellular angiofibroma angiofibroma of soft tissue again one of the new entities nuchal type fibroma acral fibroma gardner fibroma palmer fibromatosis desmoid fibromatosis okay giant cells so there are many such tumors dermatofibrosarcoma pertuberans is there okay solitary fibrous tumor is there okay inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor is there low grade myofibroblastic tumor superficial cd34 positive fibroblastic tumor a new entity again mixo inflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma infantile fibrosarcoma adult fibrosarcoma mixo fibrosarcoma low grade fibro um, mixoid sarcoma sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma so these are some of the important entities that i have highlighted so called fibrohistocytic tumors like tino synovial giant cell tumor deep fibrous histocytoma plexiform fibrohistocytic tumor giant cell tumor of soft tissue okay these are some of the important terms that you should remember under the heading of fibroblastic and myofibroblastic tumors now we have the smooth muscle tumors we have leomyoma ebb associated smooth muscle tumor a new entity inflammatory leomyosarcoma is there then leomyosarcoma is there then skeletal muscle tumors more or less it's same rhabdomyoma embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma pleomorphic rhabdomyosarcoma spindle cell or sclerosing rhabdomyosarcoma is there then you have gist gastrointestinal stromal tumor then chondro osseous tumors like soft tissue chondroma and extra uh, skeletal osteosarcoma is there then we are having the peripheral nerve sheath tumors like schwannoma neurofibroma perineurioma granular cell tumor derm dermal nerve sheath tumor solitary circumscribed neuroma ectopic meningioma benign tri triton tumor hybrid nerve sheath tumor mpnst malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor then we have malignant melanotic nerve sheath tumor as well okay tumors of one certain differentiation like intramuscular myxoma juxta articular myxoma deep aggressive angiomyxoma atypical fibrosanthoma angiomatoid fibrous histocytoma osseous fibromyxoid tumor myoepithelioma pleomorphic hyalinizing angiotactic tumor of soft parts then hemosiderotic fibrolipomatous tumor phosphaturic mesenchymal tumor then synovial sarcoma epithelioid sarcoma alveolar soft part sarcoma clear cell sarcoma of soft tissue then desmoplastic small round cell tumor picomas undifferentiated sarcoma so these are some of the important entities that you should remember under the heading of tumor of uncertain differentiation then very very importantly they have introduced the undifferentiated small round cell sarcomas on bone and soft tissue even sarcoma was there but these three entities are newly added entities and it is a potential exam question okay round cell sarcoma with ews r1 and non ets fusion ci serial range sarcoma sarcoma with bacor genetic alteration so these are very new entities which can be asked in your exams okay now there are certain genetic tumor syndrome which is you know associated with both soft tissues and bone that is genetic tumor syndromes um, uh, you know n chondromatosis lee fromani syndrome mckeown albright syndrome multiple osteochondromas neurofibromatosis type 1 werner syndrome rothman thompson syndrome okay now we are not here classifying the tumors of the bone that will be done when we discuss about the bony tumors okay so here we are going to discuss about the update in the soft tissue tumor so we have now discussed about the uh, you know classification of the soft tissue tumor the detailed updated classification now we are going to see the real updates okay 
So the 2020 edition of the WHO classification of soft tissue and bone tumors okay, have several changes. These includes reclassification of some entities, refinement of risk classification system and the inclusion of novel disease processes, many of which are driven by recurrent gene fusions. So uh, changes in the nomenclature. So before I start, there are certain changes. Mammary type myofibroblastoma has been renamed as myofibroblastoma. And if you see, we knew about MPNST. But now there is a new term MMNST. Okay. So basically, melanotic schwannoma, it has been renamed as malignant melanotic nerve sheet tumor. This change reflects its, its more aggressive behaviors because the previous term, that is your melanotic schwannoma, did not uh, you know, uh, highlight the aggressive nature of this tumor. But now renaming it as the malignant uh, melanotic uh, you know, uh, nerve sheet tumor, it is basically uh, you know, indicative of more aggressive clinical behavior. So, what are the new entities that have been added? So, it is very imperative that you read this for this current year exam and for subsequent examination because this is a 100% sure short question that is going to be asked in your exam. The new entities that have been added okay, in the WHO 5th edition of the soft tissue tumor, this is very imperative that you know about them in details. Okay, So, the first group of tumor under the heading of lipomatous tumor, we are having two entities. Atypical spindle cell or pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. They are composed of variable proportion of atypical spindle cells, adipocytes, univacuulated or multivacuulated lipoblast, pleomorphic to multinucleated cells, and myxoid to collagenous stroma. They lack MDM2 or CDP4 amplification. RB gene expression is lost generally. They have a lower rate of local recurrence around 10 to 15 percent, and there is no known risk of D differentiation. Secondly, we are having the myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma. It occurs predominantly in children and young adults with a predilection for the mediastinum. Admixture of areas resembling myxoid liposarcoma with more cellular areas containing overt nuclear pleomorphism which resembles pleomorphic liposarcoma. They lack the recurrent chromosomal changes namely the MDM2 amplification and DDIT3 gene fusion. The clinical behavior is akin or very similar to pleomorphic liposarcoma. If you look at the diagram over here on the left hand side over here, we have the atypical spindle cell lipomatous tumor. The tumor composed of mildly atypical hyperchromatic spindle cells and adipocytic cells set in a myxocollagenous stroma. On the right hand side, we are having atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. There is a presence of, of multivacuulated lipoblast, okay, is we seen over here and that can be accepted also. This is the atypical, but you can see that much amount of pleomorphism is present over here. That is why it is the atypical pleomorphic lipomatous tumor. Then we have the myxoid pleomorphic liposarcoma. So, the neoplastic cells, they are set. Basically, if you see the neoplastic cells, okay, they are set in a myxoid stroma. They have a plexiform vascular pattern. So, you can see the vessels, okay, the plexiform vascular patterns. Rare pleomorphic lipoblast might be encountered in this particular tumor. Okay. Then we are having the fibroblastic or myofibroblastic tumor.